Well, good day, viewers, and a happy Easter Sunday. And today is the Sunday Fireside Chat. And it looks like not too bad of a day. Cloudy, I guess, sort of. The sun is kind of peeking through here and there. But not raining or snowing. Isn't that nice? Still have snow in the woods there. A lot of the other snow that's out in the open is gone, so that's a nice thing. And uh, I guess to start off the Easter Sunday edition of the Fireside Chat is I think the Easter Wabbit has gone home to his bed. I'd say he was some busy over the weekend. I did see him this morning for a few minutes, but I didn't get him on video because he kind of was hiding or took and got away before I got my camera out. <laughs> but I did get a pretty good video of him the other day. So he was a busy fellow this weekend, I would say. So we're going to do the weather here and uh, so we'll get on with things. And it's not that warm out today, it's minus 1 Celsius, and that would be 31 degrees Fahrenheit. Wind is very low, west wind is 18 miles an hour, you don't really feel anything when you go outside. 29 kilometers plus in, in kilometers, yeah. So the week isn't looking too, too bad. It's got at least some sunshine for the next three or four days. And then some cloud Thursday, and then, of course, nest on Friday. A little bit of sun and cloud on Saturday coming. Of course, that all could change. And the temperatures are hovering above freezing through the day and some below freezing at the night. So... Typical, I'm going to have to start saying typical April weather soon, instead of typical March weather. <laughs> so I guess March is going out uh, like a lamb, here anyway, so I think it came in like a lamb, so out like a lamb. Well, you don't see that too often. Anyhow, there's our weather. Now, what? Have we got going on today? As usual, I think of things to say, and uh, of course, once I get started, I forget. Um, I'll just do a little bit over here, I guess. Uh, I'll just kind of set you up here for a minute. So uh, this deck here, I was working on this the past week or week and a half or so. And uh, I did get it fixed up, I think, quite nicely. This, uh, this all seems to roll very well. I don't seem to have any slop anymore in anything. This side I wasn't having any trouble with. It was this side that was giving me the trouble. But I put I put goop on all the shafts and the pins there, and that tightened it up real nice. But of course, knowing me, if you knew me personally, you'd know that I made a mistake on this when I put it together. The blades have to be timed on this deck. One has to be set up in this position, going back and forth this way. And the other one has to be set up, going back and forth this way. When you put all this together. And I know that, and I, I've preached that over the years about them. And... Uh, and I'm sure I had it in time, but the next day when I come out to do something with it, I must have turned something. 
And when I drilled the hole for this pin, this shaft wasn't in the proper position and the blade was pointed like that. So when they turned, they hit in the middle. So, not wanting to take all that apart again there because it was all together nicely, I had to take the bolts out of here, lift this one up, take the bolts out of here, lift this one out, undo these four bolts here, slide the gearbox off, turn the blade underneath to where I wanted it straight, slide that back on, and put it all back together, which worked fine, just just an extra hour or two of work because of a mistake. Anyway, that is not uncommon with me. Now, I just want to show you the underneath. I, uh, I put, uh, it's the first time I've ever used this stuff. My son seems to use it quite a bit, and he, uh, he likes it great, so. Um, I'll just stand it up like that for now. See if we can get you over here to have a look. Yeah, he's all coated with Tor 15. And when that stuff dries, oh man, oh man, it's as hard as can be. So we'll see how that fares out. I won't know until this coming winter, I guess, when I take it out and go to clean it. But this deck never really ever got too much grass in it anyway. But and uh, you know, it's in good shape for forty-five or no, fifty-five to fifty to fifty-five years old. Good shape. Anyway, I'll set that back down. So, let's see how that fares out. Well, like I say, my son likes it great. And we might as well go over and look at this one. Did some work to this fellow here. This one is, uh, is a lot worse shape, rust-wise, because of a cover that was on there. There's a... I guess you'd call it a safety cover. I don't know what they call them. But anyway, it covers the pulleys and the belts and all the moving parts. But all the grass and dirt and mice and nests and everything else being in there for 49 years on this deck, and it just rusted the thing out completely. I had to fix that last year. Put a new piece in there because that fell right out of the deck. And I'm hoping to do the rest of it someday. Anyway, I pour 15 that top there. I had a spot here that was broken apart, worn away to the point where it broke apart, so I fixed that. And what else? I guess that's about all. Just Check the way things turn. Everything seems to be good. So it's ready for the grass cutting. And I must say, because I know somebody will want to know, I did not. I repeat, I did not sharpen the blades on this one or the other one. Now, there's some kind of debate going on about that here lately, about having sharp blades or not sharp blades. It's kind of like having a, a cab tractor or not a cab tractor. <laughs> anyway, I haven't sharpened blades on the mower decks in years. And my, <laughs> my grass cuts just fine. I don't see any, any difference in the sharp blades to the dull blades. The grass cuts fine either way, as far as I'm concerned. 
and I have, may have mentioned that because this deck is 50 to 55 years old, and I kind of think with that Jacobson one over there too, that you cannot buy blades for them anymore. So the more you sharpen them, the less time you're going to have with them. So you want to keep using your old equipment. You might want to rethink about sharpening your blades if, if you can't get blades. Anyway, that's just what I do. That doesn't mean that I'm trying to tell you what to do. I just don't see any difference in it. Sharp or not sharp. I got an old deck that I fixed up in for this John Deere. It's out. It's out in this little building out here. <laughs> if I showed you the blades on, on that mowing deck, and it cuts perfect also, uh, that poor fellow that's going on about the sharpening the blades, I think he'd have a stroke. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's a good old deck. It's, it, was a, it was an oil tank. The fellow that owned this tractor before me, the deck rusted out, he told me this, and he made a new deck out of an oil tank and took all the necessary parts off the old rusty deck and put it on his new homemade deck. And I'm telling you, that deck works perfect. Guts the grass just great. And I might put it on the tractor someday again. I haven't had it on this one for quite some time now. So I did fix it all up. And uh, I was having some trouble with the bearings or something, maybe. Forget now what it was. Anyway, I put grease nipples in it, I think, somewhere along the way. And fixed up the little bit of rust that was on it and painted it all up. And it's sitting in that little building there ever since. So, anyhow. How long are we here now? Well, it's only 12 minutes. That's pretty good. We'll see how things go today. And what else am I doing? Oh, yes, I'm doing this here, too. I finally got one of those engines off the floor up onto here. So I am doing the video on that, so um, there's probably no how my videos go. It's stopping and starting and whatever. Anyway, I'm going to do another... I'm going to add on to the video I did yesterday, I think it was, and then I'll post that. And uh, I guess as I go along, I'll have a part one and a part two and part three and try and uh, keep the videos kind of short, but have more of them or something like that, I guess. So my, my thinking is, I, we've had this engine probably 10 or 15 years, and we always thought that it was no good because it wouldn't turn over. But I found that it does turn over, and the problem I was thinking that it had, both problems I was thinking that it had, it doesn't have either one of them. So this, this might be a running engine. And it may go in that tractor that I've been looking for an engine for for a year and a half. And this engine was in it. And I fixed that one all up. And I obviously did something wrong and ruined the rod in it after about 20 minutes of running. So there you go. Like I say, different times, I'm not an expert engine builder. 
So what else have we got going on here? There's that cab tractor while he was jumping into the videos. I see, uh, well, I'll say that later, I guess. The, we'll have to get on to the stickers here, I suppose. I've got two envelopes to do today. And uh, I guess we might get into that now. I'm going to try setting you up here and see what that looks like. And I'll zoom you in, maybe. Maybe. No, that's no good. You can't see the fire that way. It's a fireside tat, so you got to be able to see the fire a little bit. Fireside tat. All right, let's put you right here. Make the magnet get in the same place. Where am I at here? Okay, I guess that's better. Yeah, that'll be good right there. Let me see if I can get the glare away there, maybe, maybe. Boy, my son's going to have fun when the day comes. <laughs> Where are we here? Oh, yeah, that kind of blocked it up a little bit. We could maybe zoom you in just a hair. Let's see how that looks. All right, now we'll get the sharpest knife on YouTube. So I'm going to have to cheat today as I open these and have a look at them when they look at my other phone here and, and look up their channel so I know what's going on. The, the, uh, I'm going to have to apologize now. That would be a good time to do this. I'm getting to the point where I can't watch every uh, every uh, video that comes out on the channels that I'm subscribed to. And I always kind of prided myself in watching everybody's videos and commenting. So I'm trying my best to do <laughs> to keep doing that, but holy cats there's so many good so many good videos to watch. It just takes up a lot of time. And uh, if, if I don't watch or comment on your video, I apologize, but it's not that I'm not thinking of you. I, I just just got too many to do, too many to watch, I guess. And as summer comes along, um, I'm going to have even less time because I'm going to be into the grass cutting and the wood cutting and the... And the uh, Whatever else 
<laughs> whatever else million things that's got to be done and I'd be over it mostly at my son's place there's a lot of stuff to do over there and uh, and speaking of my son he bought another tractor anyway it's just a little tractor uh, it's a Massey Ferguson uh, 7 I would say or it's possibly a Massey Ferguson 8 but they're basically both the same tractor one had a 7 horsepower engine the other one had an 8 horsepower engine the 8's did come with a, a brake like an emergency brake that you could apply to keep the tractor from moving where the 7's didn't have that and uh, the eight takes the same deck as I showed you over here that I had been fixing up and put the 415 on. Um, but the difference in this tractor is it's a hydrostatic tractor. And the seven that we have is a geared tractor. So my son has wanted one of these hydro eights for a long time he says 20 years he's been wanting one of them so he found one of course not in by no means in mint condition and it's missing a, an engine and it's missing an engine bonnet and a grill and i don't know what else but anyway but it is a hydrostatic tractor so he's hoping to kind of fix it up and get it running he just wants to Try that as compared to, to the geared tractor. So we were going to go get that today, but uh, then plans changed. So we may go next Saturday. So anyway, like I say, I uh, I apologize if I don't get to see and comment on your great videos. It's just getting to be. Uh, and I'm up early <laughs> in the morning, sometimes three and four and five in the morning. And I watch videos for two to three, four hours. <laughs> and I still can't keep up. Anyway, I'll do my best. That's my thing, I guess so. All right, so yeah, so I may, I may cheat here and, and look at the channel, so. Yeah, okay, so the first one here I did open the other day, so it's uh, I'll keep this here. Anyhow, so uh, the first channel is Larry Cluck Outdoors. And Larry is, uh, it's got a great channel here. From I have watched a couple of Larry's. Uh, I just didn't get to watch a lot of them. And I am subscribed. Um... His latest one is uh, the feeding time for the deer. So he cut a video on that. And then he, uh, last week, I guess he got a bunch of snow. So he was plowing with his, his Polaris Sportsman 450. And there was trees he was pulling out to his land. And uh, he does... Uh, firewood he drags out wood and cuts it up and splits it and that kind of stuff so it's all good fun stuff to watch 
Got a little trailer there to haul his wood with. And so there we go. Yeah, he's got a nice little table. There's a, if you're into wood cutting and wood splitting and hauling and stuff like that, it's a good channel to watch. He does lawn care too. Anyway, but we'll show you the sticker here and get it up on the board. So here's Larry's. Sticker. I'm going to get the glare out of it. There we go. Nice size sticker. Nicely done. All the trees on it. Nice sticker, Larry. Yeah, we'll find a spot for you here. And uh, there we go. Now we're going to put you right over here, I think, Larry. Right under Outdoors in the 608. Just excuse me for a minute. Right, get this on straight. Yes, that's... There, look at that now. I'm going to be running out of room here soon. That looks pretty good. Yeah, all right, we get on to the next one. Or how many minutes have we got here? Oh dear, 27 minutes. So I better shut you off and then I'll start you back up again. There now, just like that. So now it'll keep going. And like I say, for some reason it shuts off at 30 minutes. And if I if I shut the video off and restart it, then and I do that maybe a couple of times, I can get it up to an hour and then that's it. It stops and it won't reset. Anyway, that's the problem with not having updated equipment, I guess. All right, the next one here. This one is from Father and Son Outdoors. And they are in uh, Western Newfoundland. And uh, it's the sharpest knife on YouTube. We can get it back in here. There we go. Um, yeah. Don't yeah. There we go. Okay. Keep that. Now I've watched a couple of uh, videos with. Uh, I can't remember their names now. Andrew is the father, I think, and Jacob is the son, I think. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I'll just have a look at their channel here. So it's father and son outdoors. Let's see what we got here. And then I'm, up, I'm also subscribe to this one too. All right, let's have a look over here. 
Yes, uh, the father's name is Andrew, but I'm not sure about the son's name. And from what I saw here on a couple of videos, uh, he has a daughter also. And uh, they like going out into the woods and setting up a little fire and having a coffee or a, or a snack. They cook up numerous different things on their fire. And uh, that's their hobby. And he has shown different ways he looks after his uh, axes. He's got some different types of axes there that he likes to keep up and, and uh, keep in nice condition. See if I can find some stuff here. He's got one uh, video here. What's your favorite axe? I did watch that one. And uh, cook up in Newfoundland, cooking over and over a fire. Oh, he must be into the ice fishing too. He's got ice fishing gear. Newfoundland Christmas hash. Holy cats! I'm going to have to watch that one. I might just try that. Newfoundland Christmas hash. Mm, I like hashes. I like my father used to make a fish hash and he'd put a whole bunch of fish in it with onions and potatoes and fry it all up. Holy cats, it was good. I do the same thing with uh, hamburgers. Yeah, he's got some uh, videos on what he uses for gear in the winter time, what he takes with him to the woods. Yeah, I think they were gone to Halifax there a week or two ago. I'm not real sure. What for? But anyway, that's none of my business. So, anyway, it's got a good channel here. It's got lots of lots of outdoor stuff and fires. Looks like he has a side by side. Or he was for a ride, a side-by-side -side ride in Bridgewater, Nova Scotia. So I don't know if he owns a side-by-side -side or not. New wax and saw for the winter. Yeah, we well, got lots of lots of outdoor activity stuff. All right. Now we'll show you his sticker. Yeah, that's a great stick of that. All the symbols of outdoor activities on there. Very nice. Okay, we'll get you right up here on the board. Andrew? Excuse me for a minute, folks. Well, I get this nice sticker on here. Where are we going to put you? I guess we'll put you right over here. Make sure we get it straight. There now.
Well, I got a bit, enough room for four or five stickers left, maybe. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's a great looking sticker. Thanks a lot, Andrew. And I hope I can get to watch some of your videos. I am, like I say, subscribed. All those channels that are on the board there, I am subscribed to. And I am subscribed to many other ones. I just never got a sticker from them. Anyway. Well, that's good. Now, right now, where are we at now? we got eight minutes. Oh, we got a little while yet, though. So I forgot to put up my studio light, didn't I? Sure. Well, I just, you just can't seem to get everything right with this video stuff. No wonder them video boys are always. Yeah. I guess I never remember how to put this on either. She's quite a set up here. In the scratch. Okay. There. Yeah, it's not an easy task trying to remember the little things that you have to do that you, to make a video. I've got my bunny rabbits up here for for Easter, see. I was watching one this morning there, Hillbilly Franks. And uh, <laughs> he was having quite a time trying to get a tree out of the woods with his excavator, but he was having more trouble trying to keep the camera in place. <laughs> yeah, Hillbilly Frank. Frank's quite a fella. He certainly likes burning wood, that's for sure. I don't have a sticker from him either, but I am subscribed to him. Anyway, there we go. So, uh, we'll kind of go over the stickers here. I, I don't know if I have a whole lot on stories today or not with them. I have to try and remember, of course. Let's see if we can find some kind of a pointer, maybe. Well, maybe not, I guess. Maybe not. Maybe I'll do that. I'll, uh, I'll take you over here. And maybe I'll slide this out of the way. I'll sit on this chair and we'll look at the board this way. There now. Yeah, there's room for four or five more. Then I'm going to fill up this side here. And once I fill that up, I kind of don't know if I'd ever be able to ever fill that up anyway, but I didn't think I'd ever fill this up either. So, I don't know what I'm going to do once all this is filled up here. But I have another piece of board like this one. But the problem is where to put it. I'm very limited on space here. Anyhow, what do we got going here today? Well, Grampy's workshop. Well, Grampy had a nice Easter message there on Friday. And there's 
Luke. Orange is my new green. Kathy again. Murphy Mower. What did he have on the go? Oh, he had an air operated oil or a fluid extractor. That was kind of interesting. We had that on there this week. And what else do we have? Oh, Joseph's Garden Tractor Boy. Holy cash, Joseph, I haven't watched your video yet. <laughs> Jumping. <laughs> Every week, the same thing. I haven't watched Joseph's video. I'll get to that today, hopefully. And Boda Bob. In the backyard with Dell. Wow. In the backyard with Dell. Well, I gotta remember. Oh, yeah, he had picked up a another gas tank for his uh, David Bradley tractor. I hope I said that right, Dell. <laughs> Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Dell. If, if I'm pretty sure it's a David Brown. No, David Bradley. Yeah, David Bradley t tractor, uh, two-wheel walk behind tractor. So he's he's trying to fix up a uh, a gas tank for it. So he's trying to get the rust out of the gas tank. And he came up with quite an idea there to help kind of beat the rust out of it. He Put a whole bunch of uh, uh, weed whacking string in the drill, cut them all to a certain length, and of course, when you turn the drill on, they'd all fly out from centrifugal force and beat the inside of the gas tank. So I thought that was quite an idea. Uh, correct me, Dale, uh, if I'm wrong on what I said there. So, okay. David Bradley, I'm pretty sure that's what he is. And this garden tractor boy again. Len's keeping busy. Yes, well, Len is keeping busy. He's still at his wood fence there, which he's building. That was one from a, a year or two years ago, I think. But he's building the same thing again. So he's just starting to build the front wall there. Well, he's got quite the talent for stacking wood. Now, what else have we got here? We have Mr. Gary, and we have Kenny, Open Air Adventure. What does Kenny do? I'm going to pull my arm back here. Ooh. Um, Kenny, 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 what was he doing? Oh, an oil change on, on uh, his ATV. I'm sorry I don't have the name, Kenny. I can't remember. <laughs> everybody's machines, I guess. But yeah, he had a good little video on the change in oil there on that this week. And this fella here, I would just pass over that RCA fella there for a minute. Maintenance with Mike. Mike was doing something. What was he doing? I didn't watch that one either. I think he was putting a bathroom fan in this week. Yeah. Then we have Brock, Lewis Motors, Lewis Motors and Boats. It looks like my camera is going haywire here, so I'm going to shut this off again just. All right, I guess it's fixed itself. I don't know why it does that either. You move the camera like that and it just jumps, jump, 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 instead of going smooth back and forth. Anyhow, um, uh, yeah, Brock uh, at Lewis Mowers and Boats. What was he fixing up now? Oh dear, I can't remember for sure. He fixed up a John Deere tractor there last week that I, I liked. <laughs> anyway. Gravely small engine repairs. Artie. Artie's got a great channel there. 
And I think this week he had his 73 C8 grave leaves out. I think that's what it is. Already the, the, correct me if I'm wrong on what I said there. Anyway, he was checking for uh, leaks. He was having some trouble with uh, leaking oil out of it. So, and I don't think he has too much trouble there now. I think he got her pretty well fixed up, I think. And we've got this fellow here, this Craig fellow. Let me just kick him over for Rick. Rick at Twin Brook Acres. Rick has got a, <laughs> a video out today that I haven't looked at either yet. And I don't know if he's going to put out his uh, antique tool video today or not. But anyway, he's into the cab and non-tractor cab uh, video. So uh, I'll have to watch that one, that's for sure. Uh, see what he's got to say about that. We all know what this fellow's got to say about a cab tractor or a non-cab tractor. Okay, so now um, Rick, I guess Donita has gone away for the weekend and Rick is there splitting wood by himself and uh, doing his pine straw. He should go look at that. That's quite a thing that he's got going there. He, he puts the pine straw around people's houses in their little gardens that are out around the front sort of thing, or back, or front yards, or anywhere. It's quite a thing the way he does that. Looks quite nice when it's done too. And retired for life. Now I don't know if I saw a video or not this week. Can't remember. Last one I remember is with him sawing on his sawmill. Anyway, outdoors in the 608. Jeremiah's got a video on there today, which of course I haven't watched yet, but I will get to it. And something to do with stacking, I think, is what that video is about. Tucker and I out in the boat. Uh, Gary's back from Halifax. Or no, back from Ottawa. And I guess he's having a little back trouble now, so we'll have to hopefully he gets better soon. And then Brian is Todd Raven. Well, he had a video out today on fixing the, the heat pump. Nice little fix. It kind of makes you wonder if a person was smart enough that they might be able to fix that electronic board. I guess the electronic board shorted out from a power surge or power off, power back on problem. Anyway, I always kind of like fooling with those circuit board things, so sometimes you could fix them. <laughs> and I'm no. <laughs> I'm no, not trained in any of that stuff either. Yeah. All right, big sons. Well, big son, he's cutting grass. And that's just the way that is. He's going to be doing that for the next number of months. Al and family firewood. They're a busy couple of those two. Always at the wood. And uh, got more free wood. And I was always amazed at the, uh, the machine that loads the wood onto their trailer. Big, big stuff, you know, 12, 16 foot long logs and could be upwards of 20 inches around or bigger, I think. And this little machine with a set of tracks on it and the stand on the back of it can come along with a, what do you call them things, a grapple and grab onto those logs and lift them up at least probably six feet off the ground and set them 
on his trailer. So he uh, he asked them the other day what kind of machine it was and uh, what kind of lift capacity it has. And so if you're interested in that kind of stuff, you should go and watch Town of Fans and Firewood. It's uh, interesting to hear what that little machine will do. It's not his machine. It's the people that are the, are the tree cutters. And that's their machine that they use to move the wood around. With. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a machine. Anyway, log father, he's got a good channel going there too. I like watching that. I like the the saw milling, he's got quite a sawmill. And he uh, sells firewood and he sells lumber and all that kind of stuff. And then we have father and son outdoors and Larry Cluck outdoors. And this fella here, well, he doesn't know too much, this fella. He's, he's just lucky to get through the day, I think. But he gets his grass cut. <laughs> With dull blades. And he uses a cab tractor. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, I think Dave is off to see his family today. So that's another one I've never watched yet. He's got a video out this morning too, but he normally does on Sunday. Well, I'm, I haven't watched a whole lot today, I guess so. Anyway, Dave's got a good channel there. And uh, he, I, I believe, he was kind of off this past month from YouTube somewhat, so I kind of thought that he had said that he'd be kind of back on board on the, in around the first week or two of April, I suppose, so we'll, we'll wait for Dave's videos to come along. So we'll go back to this fellow here just for a minute. He seems to think that the Canadian government, and probably this fellow is probably the one that initiated it, but he seems to think that the Canadian government is going to have the uh, mowing deck police coming around to your garage or shop, wherever you store your lawnmower, just to see if your blades are sharp. This is what this fellow is thinking. And the law is going to be that you have to cut your lawn so that the grass is one inch tall. So I kind of think in a lot of locations, grass that's one inch tall is going to go brown. And he seems to think that this new law is going to help with the uh, people looking at lawns while they're out driving around. And they want all the lawns to look the same. This is what the new law is going to be about, I guess. Anyway, I think that you know, I'm pretty sure I'm not sure of all the provinces, but I'm pretty sure here where I am that you're not even supposed to cut your grass on the month of May. So you don't cut off the dandelions, and you don't cut off what the bees need from the dandelions. So, so I can't see the government initiating a, a law like this to have to cut the grass for one inch. The other thing I would say is having to cut your lawn down to one inch would take an, an more enormous amount of extra fuel, no matter what kind of fuel it is, to cut the grass to one inch as compared to uh, three and a half inch about. I'm not sure what the standard height is, but I think that's what it is. 
So the government doesn't want fuel being burnt, right? They don't want anybody to burn any fuel. That's what they're after. So I can't see them coming around and telling you that you have to have your grass cut to one inch because that is going to take an awful lot more fuel, no matter what kind of fuel, to do. So, there, Craig, you wanted me to do a little something on the Sunday fireside chat? Well, there you go. <laughs> and I'm sure I'm going to get a response. <laughs> Oh dear. So keep your eyes peeled for the the MDP. The mowing deck police. I don't think you're ever gonna see them, but just keep an eye out for this. For this fella, it might be him coming to your yard. <laughs> All right, I guess that's enough foolishness for today. I got to get back at it here. And that is our Sunday, uh, our Easter Sunday fireside chat edition today and who knows what I'll be up to next week I'll be doing a little bit more on that engine probably and I'll have to change my nice calendar that my son got me for Christmas tomorrow so we'll be going over to into April All right, I guess I'll, uh, I'll shut her down here now, and I just hope that my video works. So, uh, have a great Sunday, an Easter Sunday, wherever you're at and whatever you're doing, and hopefully you have a good day. Goodbye now. <laughs>